This is Lori. She's a carnival trick shooter. This is Bart. He's been obsessed with guns since he was a boy. And together, they rob banks. This is Gun Crazy. Released in 1950, Gun Crazy is a propulsive, energetic, unrelenting force of a film. Directed by Joseph Lewis and starring John Dahl and Peggy Cummins, Gun Crazy is simultaneously of its time and ahead of its time. A film where the direction and acting feels free and untethered to anything else that was coming out of Hollywood at the time. Made outside of the studio system, the film was produced by the King Brothers. The screenplay was written by McKinley Cantor and blacklisted writer Dalton Trumbo, writing under the front of Miller Kaufman. This is a story of dizzying, crazy love and obsession that so intricately links sex and violence that as soon as Lori and Bart hook up, we know that the two have nowhere else to end this story but the grave. Gun Crazy opens with Bart as a young boy. He's fascinated by guns. He loves to shoot them. He loves to show them off. And he even steals one. And as a result, he is sent to reform school. We're not trying you here today because you like to shoot, Bart. We're trying you because the thing you like so well has turned into a dangerous mania with you. Flash forward to the present day and Bart's back from the reformatory and a stint in the army where he taught marksmanship. And Bart's got an idea. And it's a good idea. I don't know. I think I'd kind of like to settle down. Maybe get a job with Remington or one of those outfits demonstrating. Hey! But his first night back, Bart and his friends decide to go to a carnival, and that's where he meets the dangerous, the beautiful, Miss Sandy Laurie Star. Well, match, meet gasoline. And the idea of that nice, stable job with Remington goes right out of the window. He joins the carnival as a trick shooter, and he and Lori fall in love. They get fired from the carnival because, hey guys, you can't shoot at your boss. And Lori, who needs lots of action and lots of money, and whose only desire is to live, live, live it up, convinces Bart to join her in a series of robberies. Bart, I want things, a lot of things, big things. I don't want to be afraid of life or anything else. I want a guy with spirit and guts. The first robbery they commit is relatively harmless. I mean, it's still a robbery, but compared to what comes later, it's child's play. But as they become more reckless, the stakes get higher. I want action. Even though Bart knows everything about the two of them is wrong. It's just that everything's going so fast. It's, it's, it's all in such high gear. Action. Bart, honey, she tried to tell you. I told you I was no good. I've never been much good. She ain't the type that makes a happy home. He just can't quit Lori. Their attraction to each other is rooted in a shared love of danger and excitement, and their crimes are a way of indulging this desire. But a love like that cannot last. It's too hot. It's got to burn itself out. Bart becomes increasingly disturbed by their actions. Bart could never kill anyone. Lori, on the other hand, she does what she wants. She can get caught up in the moment, and then she has no self-control and asks for killing. Like that guy you killed in St. Louis? I told you I was no good. The chemistry between John Dahl and Peggy Cummins is electric, and it's palpable. Dahl is extremely charming, sensitive, and attractive in the role of Bart, and his quiet thoughtfulness is a perfect counter to Cummins' wild, mad, crazy energy. Nobody dare shoot him and take the baby with us. But he'd be safe. They wouldn't dare. They both give compelling and very modern performances that keeps the film from feeling dated. Well, as is usually the case with the films discussed on this channel, not many people saw Gun Crazy when it was first released under the god-awful title, Deadly is the Female. It's the only film made by the King Brothers to lose money, but it's also their masterpiece. 
And even though American audiences dismiss Gun Crazy, the film's visual style and use of handheld cameras, long takes, and location shooting had an impact on French directors like Francois Truffaut and Jean-Luc Godard, and later the French New Wave movement that emerged in the late 1950s and early 1960s. 1967's Bonnie and Clyde also owes a great debt to Gun Crazy. We rob banks. Truffaut and Godard showed Gun Crazy to Bonnie and Clyde director Arthur Penn. Today, Gun Crazy is widely regarded as one of the most influential films in the film noir genre, yet I still feel like it might be missed or overlooked by the casual viewer. Its innovative camera work, use of sexuality, and the depiction of eroticized violence was both shocking and groundbreaking at the time of its release. You've probably never seen anything like it. It's an exciting, thrilling 80 minutes of viewing that you'll never forget. If you want to watch Gun Crazy, I've linked it in the description below. And if you do get around to watching it, please come back here and let me know what you think. I guarantee you're in for a wild ride. There are 8 million stories in the Cinema Cities. This has been one.